Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Wednesday, February 12th, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, Chief Market Strategist at Chicken Analytics. Find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today, where you can sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider. Yeah, it hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities were mostly higher in Tuesday's trading, but finished just off the lows of the day. REITs, energy, and consumer discretionary were the best performers. Comm services, consumer staples, and technology all finished lower. Treasuries were weaker across the curve. The dollar was lower against the yen, but flat against the euro. Gold was down 60 basis points and WTI crude. Closed up 70 basis points, but was still below the $50 a barrel mark. And as we get to the desk this morning, S&P futures are up 40 basis points after U.S. equities finished mostly higher on Tuesday. Asian markets were higher overnight, led by China and South Korea. European markets are also stronger here this morning. Treasuries are weaker with the curve steepening. Dollar is stronger against the yen, but slightly weaker on the euro cross. Gold is little change. WTI crude is adding on, up 1.4%, despite a bigger-than-expected stockpile build in the API report that came out after the close yesterday. Taking a look at the structure of the S&P 500, another push to new highs before fading late in the day. We pushed up to new high levels and then started to fade throughout the afternoon and close near the lows of the day. Support is in the range between 3250 and 3300. Now we've kind of bumped that up here a bit. That's near term support level. We are still looking for a resistance level to form. The RSI remains in bullish ranges, but that divergence that we've been talking about for the past few days does remain in play. And you can see it here pretty clearly the S&P 500 making a new high and the RSI so far making a lower high. Now it could just be that it needs some time to catch up. Uh, is that a sign to just sell everything and immediately worry? Absolutely not, but it's just something to be aware of within the marketplace. At the same time, shaken money flow is still bullish. So for all intents and purposes, the indicators remain in place. We still have a nice uptrend support in the range between 3250 and 3300 to any uh, near-term pullbacks. Taking a look at our market in a minute now, what are we writing about in the note today for Chaken Analytics clients? Well, move higher once again, despite closing near the day's lows. Uh, at the main index level, the Qs continue to lead while IWM, the small caps, lag the broader market. Sentiment moves towards greed as the market moves higher. A little bit of a reprieve from what we saw last week. Software and services remains market leadership. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later on in the show. As I said, Futures do point to a higher open here once again today. So we're still looking to carve out that resistance level should one um, begin to take form. For the major indices, looking at them from a power bar perspective, the Dow was unchanged yesterday and remained uh, eight bulls to six bears, similar to the day before us. S&P 500 up slightly, up 18 basis points, 149 to 64 bulls to bears there. NASDAQ eked out a small gain of one basis point. 37 bulls to five bears for the NASDAQ. Small caps were actually an outperformer yesterday, despite lagging from a trend perspective. 506 bulls to 255 bears for the small caps. Bonds down to extending yields lower. And REITs were a strong group yesterday. The REITs were up about 1.2%, but the power bar ratio, uh, if we look within XLRE, uh, is bearish, right? There, there's two bullish or very bullish stocks and XLRE for four bearish or very bearish stocks. According to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. Across the board, however, the major indexes are mixed. Turning now to our stock of the day. Remember, the stock of the day is auto-generated based on the power gauge rating. And today's stock is Micron Technologies. And this is one that we've actually uh, we've liked and highlighted in our notes uh, over the past couple of weeks. Micron closed at 57.25, down 14 basis points yesterday. The power bar ratio... I'm, I'm sorry, the power gauge rating from Micron is very bullish due to very positive expert activity as well as attractive financial metrics. Earnings and technicals are middle of the road for now. But when we take the 20 factors, five in each of these four categories, we come out with that very bullish rating. Strong trend, strong industry group. The trend is measured by this long-term trend line. Obviously, the semiconductors are strong. You know we've been talking about them for quite some time, and we continue with a favorable view on the semiconductor space. For Micron itself, that very bullish rating is met with uh, 
some good relative strength. The stock continues to outperform as it has been since July. Money flows a little bit mixed here in the near term. Overbought, oversold indicator is middle of the road. Uh, as we sit here and consolidate above that rising long-term trend line. So Micron is a name we like. We, we were highlighting it back here on this pullback to oversold conditions. Uh, now with the overbought, oversold indicator in the middle of the range, kind of corresponding with price, I think there's a couple of ways that you can play this. You can wait for an oversold condition or you can buy a breakout through $60. That's kind of how I'd be framing up Micron here in the near term. But uh, either way, Micron, certainly one of the types of names that we want to consider. It really just comes down to timing and uh, you know figuring out the entry that best fits your investment style. Turning now to our sector tracker, looking at the movement of the major sectors over the last five days, REITs have had a good run of late, and they are leadership over the past five days, followed by energy. Now, that bounce in energy appears to be counter-trend in nature, uh, as far as I'm concerned. We looked at, uh, we've looked at energy a lot of times here in the past. It does remain bearish from a fundamental perspective uh, based on our work at Shaken Analytics, and that continues to be the case. Healthcare in the number three slot, that's a group that we've recently warmed up to. Industrials, financials, comms, and discretionary or middle of the road. Tech, you know, remember what we talked about yesterday in tech? Tech looked a little extended to the upside, maybe a little bit of a reprieve here uh, in the near term. Staples, utilities, and materials round out the bottom three. Interesting to note that with the strong rally over the past, call it seven days of trading, all of the major sectors are higher uh, over the past five days. So that is an encouraging sign if you are bullish, as we are on the equity market. Now, turning to our industry in focus, uh, it's mining services, which over the past six months has been a big underperformer. It's lagged the S&P 500 by uh, a little over 13.5%. Its power bar ratio is neutral. We have three bullish stocks for three bearish stocks. But it's currently ranked number 17 of 21 subsectors, having moved down three slots over the past week. Now, some of the indicative bearish names there to go along with this underperformance uh, Royal Gold, RGLD, McEwen, MUX, and Core Mining, CDE, all have very bearish shake and power gauge ratings. I will note that MUX and CDE are low price stocks, about a dollar and six dollars uh, respectively. So just something to keep in mind if you are going to dig in and do some work there. And if we take a look at the fund itself, XME, we can see that XME has a bearish ETF power gauge rating and a weak trend below this declining long-term trend line. Uh, bearish rating met with underperformance as the, as the fund is now overbought with bearish money flow. If, you know, this is a group that we would con continue to avoid, right? Just doesn't look that compelling on the long side of the portfolio, uh, in terms of looking for names or if you're structuring an ETF portfolio, um, just, you know, not something that, um, that looks compelling. Uh, continue to avoid this area of the market is how I would look at it uh, here in the near term. Taking a look at what's trending now, yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Uh, T-Mobile, T-M-U-S, uh, at up 11.78% following uh, getting the okay for their deal with Sprint. And that helped out a lot of the cell tower stocks uh, the cell tower REITs like SBAC uh, rallied yesterday. SBAC up uh, a little over seven and three quarters percent on that news. Dish Network rallying over seven percent on um, potentially partnering with Amazon on a wireless network. FTI up seven percent on that rebound in crude. And Davida DVA, actually a stock that we had featured recently uh, in our work, rallying seven percent on the heels of their earnings announcement. Now on the loser side of the board, Under Armour, their earnings and their guidance were a disappointment to the street. Stock lost nearly 19% on the day. MLM uh, down 5% following their earnings report. Same with Masco, MAS down four and a quarter percent uh, as earnings disappointed the street there. Sealed Air, SEE, similar story here. Earnings report sent that stock lower by 3%, and FRT reported earnings that disappointed uh, investors yesterday. They took uh, 3% out of that stock on the day. Now, let's dig into the charts, right? Taking a look at sentiment, right? And sentiment is moving back toward greed. What we're looking at here uh, is the CBOE 
equity options put call ratio, kind of get a sense for how investors are positioning, right? Are investors favoring puts or are they favoring calls? And right now, they, they appear to be continuing to favor uh, call options in the equity market. What's interesting to me uh, is we're back below this level that's tended to mark some choppiness in the market. But what's really interesting is uh, when the market made a new high before falling off with the coronavirus fears, this metric actually got down below the level that we saw back in January, February 2018, which preceded this consolidation in the market. Now, I'm not saying it has to play out the exact same way, but it just gives you a sense of how frothy sentiment, uh, sentiment got leading into the news of the coronavirus. Obviously, we did not know uh, what the news event would be to cause um, sentiment to back off of that bullish stance, but it did back off, but it still does remain more greedy than fearful. Uh, at the same time, the VIX has started to come in after spiking uh, back down around the 14 level and the CNN fear greed index has actually moved back into uh, ever so slightly uh, into a greed position this week. So I just kind of find it interesting. Uh, the market does remain more bullish than bearish from a sentiment standpoint. Uh, not necessarily the best timing tool, but again, something to keep in mind uh, as you're as you're monitoring situation and thinking about how aggressive you want to be uh, within the marketplace. Sentiment is is not a tailwind at, at this point. Sentiment is more likely to be a headwind uh, than a tailwind at this stage of the game uh, for the broader equity markets. We like to point it. I watch it daily. We like to point it out weekly in our note and bring you our updated thoughts and views. Uh, here on the show. Now, bigger picture, you know, when we're thinking about putting together portfolios, maybe portfolios of ETFs, or if you're drilling down and looking for ideas, Q's lead while IWM lags. So what we're looking at here in the top panel is QQQ relative to the SPY. And you can see, you know, clear market leadership after breaking out of this consolidation. The Q's have a very bullish shake and power gauge ETF rating. 37 bullish or very bullish stocks for only five bearish or very bearish stocks. So what does that tell us? That we think that that outperformance is likely to continue, right? Based on that power gauge rating for the ETF, based on that ratio, we think the outperformance there uh, is likely to continue. But it also sell, sends a, another message that we've been talking a lot about lately, and it's investor preference towards large cap growth, Right. Q's are generally a, a growth area of the market. They're certainly large cap names. And what I think is happening here is that investors are expressing their concern about slowing global growth potentially from the coronavirus by bidding up the stocks that are actually showing growth potential. Um, so whether you look at you know a growth ETF like the Vanguard growth ETF, the S&P 500 growth ETF, VOOG, or if you look at something like the Q's, uh, they continue to outperform, and we think that that outperformance is likely to persist. Now, at the same time, a riskier area of the market can certainly be considered small caps. In the bottom chart here, we can see the relative performance of IWM against the SPI, SPY, just a steady downtrend, and it's resuming here. Briefly tried to rally into the back half of last year, or the last month of last year, really, uh, and now it has started to uh, to turn lower. Once again, now IWM does have a bullish ETF rating. It does have a bullish ratio. However, that relative strength is really important to us. We want to continue to focus on the leading areas of the market uh, and shy away from the areas of the market that are underperforming, right? So that's uh, when I'm thinking about structuring a portfolio of ETFs or just looking for uh, ideas at the individual equity level. I think it makes sense to skew towards large cap and growth type names as opposed to the small cap names in the marketplace for the time being. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with software and services as market leadership. This has been an area of the market um, that we've warmed up to in the early days of 2020 as it has begun to outperform the SPY once again. Through the fourth quarter of last year, software and services were an underperformer, some profit taking after a big run in the group. And now we've started to reassert market leadership. The fund itself has a bullish ETF power gauge rating, 51 bullish or very bullish stocks for 15 bearish or very bearish stocks for this fund following this breakout above the 200 day moving average. Now here too, the RSI is holding bullish ranges, but there is a negative divergence at play, similar to what we saw playing out in the S&P 500. And you're really seeing this across a lot of funds and, and different market uh, index ETFs. Again, not something to, you know, 
rush and in, in, into an all cash position, but just something uh, to be aware of as you are making your decisions here. And again, we are still offering our 14 day trial to Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive to sign up. I hope you all have a great Wednesday. I'll be back with you here tomorrow.